This is a demo and instructional video for the MIT player, the only music player designed for folk dance sessions. You should watch this full screen so that you'll see the text better. Sit back and enjoy our tour. Neil Rosen wrote this as a gift to the MIT Folk Dance Club. That's why it's called the MIT Player. He started something like 20 years ago. In 2020, I took over directing development. With a very good programmer's help, we fixed bugs and added new features. I and many other groups love it and hope you will too. What are the, some of the MIT Player's nicest features? There's a programming window where you'll find that's nicely laid out. There's a program panel where you have your dance cue. There's a holder, which is a scratch pad area for dances that you may do later on. There's a selector area, which shows your entire repertoire, which works with the search selection area. So you can select dances of a particular type or style, nationality or choreographer or partial spelling. It provides a pause between dances with customizable delay. It's simple, but few other players do it. It even has a feature to allow you to start a dance with a delay. It gives time for you to move from the computer to the center of the circle. In the program queue, you can put teasers before a dance that plays a snippet of the song to help dancers prepare, get a partner or form into sets. The program remembers the volume that you set for each dance so that songs that are too loud or too soft get balanced out over time. You can change the speed of a dance and a final nice feature is that you can create playlists for parties, festivals, or your dance session within the same interface of the player. I'll explain each of these features in a little bit. Another nice feature is the dance hall display. It's a clean display with the current dance prominent showing upcoming dances, and it answers people's questions of what dance was done five minutes ago. There's color coding for the types of dance and also shows the country that it's from. There's an optional map and there's a little thermometer that shows how far into the dance we are. It's used by groups all around the country. So here it is in Brooklyn, at Boulder, in our own group in Morristown, and at Stockton Folk Dance Camp. Now there's a PowerPoint presentation that explains the entire player in detail. I'll point you to that in the second video. For now, we're gonna talk about basic dance session actions. If you've used the program for years, I promise you'll learn a lot of cool new stuff in the second part. I suggest skimming this video to make sure that you know all the basics. Okay, starting up, we first choose tonight's programmer. We're gonna talk about the databases later. Then the program starts up. To show you the MIT's features, we're going to skip to the middle of a session. There's a program panel that shows the dances that we're going to play this session. There's a holder area, which is a scratch pad for dances that we're gonna do later. And then there's a selector panel where you can see your entire collection, or you can choose to view different subsets. Now there are three ways to move from the selector panel to the program queue. You can move dances by dragging their name over with the mouse. And you can see the green bar shows where the dance is going to be positioned. You can click the little box and the dance gets added to the bottom of the program queue or you can use the search bar. If your typing matches the first listing exactly, hitting enter adds it to the bottom. So when I type S, if the dance that I wanted was SA, when I hit enter, it's added to the bottom. If I type SAB, the first dance that's shown is Sabrali, and when I hit enter, that goes to the bottom of the program queue. On the other hand, it shows the closest match when I type anything. But if I type UB, Ugrosh shows up, and that's clearly not what I want. And so if I hit enter, it does not. If I type UG, Ugros does come to the top and hitting enter puts that to the bottom of the program queue. Now pro tip, the program automatically homes your typing to the search bar. You don't have to move your mouse over there for the typing to show up. Also, there's a capability for partial match searches. I don't recall the exact name. I just remember that it has an SOR in it. If I start the search with a star, that triggers the partial match search. So SOR with the star in front of it shows the dances in our repertoire that has an SOR in it. You can also click the checkbox that changes it to a substring search. So with each letter that you type, the dances that match show up. You can also use the country menu with the drop down, 
or select answers by complexity or by their type. And there's that color coding. So if we're interested in a difficult couple dance from Austria, we get the single dance that's in our repertoire that matches. We can also select by choreographer. So that down here we can have dances by Christian and Sonia, or we can click in here and just type M and we get the dances that Maritz introduced or Moshe Escayo or Moshiko. We'll show later how to define all of those. Now, removing dances from the program, one way is to drag the name of the dance into the holder, or you can drag into the trash can at the bottom of the holder area. Let's suppose that we're searching for Israeli couple dances that are of medium difficulty. At some point, your programmers are going to forget that the selectors are on, and they're going to say, what happened to all of our dances? So down at the bottom, you can say clear selections, and you can click that, or control Z is the shortcut for that. Now hovering over dances, if you pay attention to the text that's in the pale yellow at the bottom, you can see that there are database categories and comments. In the comments, it stores who leads a dance, the steps, or anything that you want. If we look at Garache, if you look at the top pale yellow box, you can see we've stored the dance sequence. There's also a recently taught button. And so dances that the program has been told were taught in the past several weeks are added to the holder. Now for player control, there's play, stop. You can skip to the next dance. We can go to the previous dance, or you can hit pause. There are also function keys, function one, function two, etc., that control the same functions. Off to the right, you can see that there's a pause time between dances. So when Sevilla Sabellaloza is finished, there will be six seconds intervenes between one dance and the following dance. Now, if we want to, we can change that for this particular session to 10 seconds or 15 seconds or whatever we like. And we're going to leave that at six seconds. We can add a teaser, which will play a short snippet of the music. So let's skip to Fandango. And then after a few seconds, it stops. And then there's a countdown period, which is programmable, that gives chance for the dancers to find a partner or to form a set. Now you can also change the volume, increasing the volume or decreasing the volume. And the volume setting is saved. The volume is used in the next time that the dance is played. Your soft dances are increased in volume, Two loud dances are lowered, so over time, all the dances will be played at a consistent level. You can also change the speed and slow it down. If you changed it for teaching purposes for this week, you probably don't want it slow the next time. Thus, the speed changes are not saved unless you explicitly click the Save This Tempo button. The progress bar shows where you are in the dance, and you can jump anywhere with the mouse to anywhere within the dance using the progress bar. You can also store favorites in your database. If you click the penguin, the selector shows just my favorites and you can click control C to clear that. You can also add favorites. So when we do that, we move the label for the name into the favorites box and it shows I'm a king penguin. I like to eat small fish, but your dance was very tasty. And so we can add several dances so that next time I look for my favorites, these dances will be added. If you add a dance that has already been added to your favorites, we have a little joke that says, sorry, I only eat fresh fish. Along the top, it shows the program finish time and it adjusts automatically when we add dances to the bottom. So you see the time goes up. It also adjusts appropriately if you change the pause time between dances. Along the top, it shows who the programmer is and the software version number.
You can view past programs, which we'll show later. Now for the dance hall display, you activate that via the options. It says playlist on monitor two or function 11. And here's the dance hall display. Now you can set the program to show maps of countries and the program remembers the location it was last used for the second monitor. So this is how you tell the MIT player where your music files are. You can add individual dances, you can add a group of dances, and you can use the drag and drop function. To add an individual dance, adding a single dance at a time, you use that menu and you can click Adir Adirim, you categorize it as Israeli, and you can choose any of these other categories. We'll see later on how to define these. We add the dance. You can add several dances sequentially. So for instance, for this dance, you can say, what is this country? We can listen to it. Ah, very clearly, this is Bulgarian. So we can choose that. You can also change how the dance will be displayed. So you can say, this is a vocal version. And you can also add accents. So for instance, the capital Z with the hot check, you can replace the name there. And this is how it will show when we add the dance. Now the comment field, we saw these earlier. We can put the steps or who leads this or anything else we want. If we accidentally add the same dance twice as we do for this, add dance and then select it again, we add it again, then it will show in the list with a percent tag. Every display name has to be unique. You can add a group of dances under the top menu, add dances, add a group. And here's how you can take advantage of whatever categorization you have in the file system. If you have all of your dances organized by nationality, Ahmet only teaches Turkish dance, Gergana only teaches Bulgarian dance, then you're in like Flynn. You would select that country, Bulgarian, and then add all of the dances from that directory. If the directories are somewhat mixed, so for instance, the dances from Roberto, he mostly teaches Balkan dance, but he also teaches Italian dance and Israeli dance, then you categorize using the majority label and then fix the others later. If your directories are entirely flat, such as here, then you just categorize something arbitrary or unique. So you might type new there and then come back and adjust them later using the arbitrary feature to select them. When you add all of the dances within a directory, it won't register a duplicate if it's already in the database. You can repeatedly add from the same directory and it will automatically pick up just the new dances that weren't there before. You can also include all the subfolders. So you can read the help message. There's lots of explained there. There's no time for it here. It'll start at the top level and add every music file in all the subdirectories. This will add the percent tab for the duplicates. You may have the same file name in different directories. They might be different dances such as Yops or Eve's Chukanoto, or maybe different versions of the Pravo or Les Noto. You'll go back to those duplicates later and rename them to make the display names more meaningful. Now there's a final way to add, that's drag and drop. Say you're having a workshop. The teacher brought you a new set of MP3s. You can drag and drop a dance that they'll be teaching into your database. A similar form to the add multiple function pops up. The default country is Mars. That's Neil's little joke because it came from outer space. Now set the attributes for the dance and say it perhaps is from a workshop and then click add. We'll add it to your database and it shows up in the holder. Now, if you have a flat directory structure with all the dances in one directory, you can sort the file explorer by date to show the files that were added most recently and then drag those in. You can drag and drop multiple dances or a single dance. If multiple, set the attributes for whatever is common all of those dances or leave them as Mars if you like. You can drag dances into the program queue, the holder, 
or the selector panel to only add to the dance database. This is the simplest and fastest way to get a bunch of dances into the program. If you left them as Mars, you should later search for all the Mars dances and recategorize them. This is a couple dance, this is from Israel or Romania when you have time. On every Add Dance screen, you'll see this Retain Exact Duplicates box. Normally, the MIT player skips dances already in the database when the file name, path, and durations are an exact match. But there may be a reason why you want them to be added again. You might want to recategorize them differently, perhaps. Clicking in this box does that. They will get a duplicate tag if the display names match. If when you add dances, you get an error message, the file name contains unsupported letters or accents, and the reason for that is that the dance player cannot include dances that have foreign letters and a few of the diacritical accents are not supported. Only these you should respell in your file explorer with English letters. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about designing your database categories. Here are a few schemes as examples. For the type of dance, you could have line, couple, set, contra. Some of these are obvious. Are there any styles that you'd like to have? Another example for using styles is shown on this particular database. So for the Israeli, we have Yemenite dances, modern dances, Arabic dances, or if you have an English or a Scandi group, you might want to have dances that are categorized as jigs and slip jigs and reels and strathspays, or by eight by 32, eight by 40, half contras, full contras, and so on. Now, the more that you use, the bigger your task in categorizing your music. For some people, they'll never use more than just the name. For others, they'll want to have the options to help their programmers select dances. It's most important to state this. You should design all the categories that you think you might want later. I'm gonna say that again. You should design all the categories you think you might want later. If you add hundreds or even thousands of dances according to one scheme, and then you change your mind later, you have a big headache. You right click to bring up the update dance screen, and then you have to change all of these. It's not impossible to do, but so design these well. Choose all the categories you might use, and you don't have to fill them all in at first. Remember I showed you the drag and drop way of adding dances before? If the file names contain something useful, such as reel or jig, then you can drag all these reels in and put them into the program and then categorize these looking for the Mars dances and assigning them real or jig or eight by 32. You also can have repertoire settings. So if I click up here, only the standard Israeli shows, or we can choose the English country dance or Scottish country dance settings, and those show up. The important distinction is that repertoire settings are changed infrequently. Unlike the lower level categories, like the dance types, line and couple, or by difficulties, these are frequently changed. What's my next dance going to be? you're generally going to leave the repertoire set during an evening of programming. So they might select the repertoire for a beginner's group or an intermediate group or a Monday Balkan versus a Tuesday Salsa versus a Thursday night Israeli group. But what about the different databases that we started with? In some cities, a Balkan group might do a little bit of Israeli and the Israeli group might like to do Flora Chica. So those groups would share one database, and you could have different repertoire settings, Balkan versus Israeli, to see one or the other. The different databases would be where there's no overlap, perhaps a Salsa database and a Scandi database. Most groups probably don't even use a second database. For our own group, I've named them Click Here and Don't Click Here. Now, starting from scratch, I'm going to tell you about creating the necessary directories, initializing your setup file, entering the registration code, and some basic options. Now the directories. The main directory is where you put the program and the files that it uses. It's best not to use Windows program files directory. I highly recommend using a directory under the C drive 
such as FD for folk dance or MIT or the name of your group. Now you're going to copy into the main directory the necessary files and create these directories, favorites, music, pictures, program logs. It's best not to put your music in Windows documents or music libraries. It's not terrible if you already have them there, but you're going to end up with portability issues. The actual path in the database has your username, and that causes complications if you later move to another laptop. It's better to put the music files under a directory in the C drive. Now the setup file, basic program options. If you get the zip file from our site, you will have a sample initialization file. So you click the options here, and you end up with some sample labels and a few sample files in your database. If you don't have an initialization file and only use the executable, you'll get a message when it starts. It says it can't find the initialization file. The program will start and select set up screen from the options menu to create one. You'll end up with no dances in the database, but under the options, we say set up screen. It'll run without the registration code, but with limited functionality. If you have the code, be sure to enter it. Now would be the time to enter some of these type captions, such as line, couple, mixer, etc any of the style labels that you're interested, and the repertoire captions, such as standard versus advanced. It's a good idea to label the first database name, and if you're using two, you can put both of those names in. Now, the next thing to do is to select the primary path to the MP3s. So in this box, you select the directory that contains your music and the path to the program logs, and that would be where the files go that lists what was played each session. And then add your programmer names. And then save your settings. You start by selecting the programmer, and you'll see at first that there's your database has no dances in it. Then you add your music files, as I showed you before, and you're ready to go. This is the end of the basics video for the MIT player. I hope you learned enough to get started using its great features. After a few weeks of using it, I urge you to look at the advanced video where you'll learn a lot of cool features I didn't have time for in this first part. You'll learn about playlists, more detail about updating the dance data, how to customize the look and feel of the player, and cool tricks like putting up customized messages on the dance hall display, setting tabs to make teaching a breeze, remote controls, searching the comments section, making frequency counts, grabbing dances from past programs, defining country hierarchies like Balkan or South American, posting pictures on the dance hall display, even a magic programmer, and more. The one thing from that second video I'll say now, if you have a physical second monitor, on your setup screen, choose second monitor, not screensaver, so that you can use the dance hall display feature. Oh, and after making changes to the dance database, always do backups. Control B is a shortcut. Okay, that's it. See you in the second video.